good morning good morning social media good morning facebook and good morning youtube viewers happy sunday my name is jimmy smith i'm the host of the big show alongside of me is my co-host and color commentator Dwayne ward hey nice nice shirt bro nice shirt yeah i figured i yeah this is uh actually this is uh honoring uh my uh, father-in-law um, this was actually a shirt that uh, he had, and he had actually passed away a few years ago, and I wear it in his honor. But yes, this is my fun little... Oh, uh, hold on, hold on. I see the small print. My wife is psychotic. There you go, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Gary, uh, my, my my father-in-law, he was uh, he was a trip. Uh, loved, loved him, loved him. Uh, just a great guy uh, all the way around, and uh, he had a... Uh, even though I only, I mean, I only knew him, uh, what, uh, five some odd years, uh, he and I got along like, uh, you know, peanut butter and jelly. And, uh, he, it was, yeah, it, it, we, we shared a lot of the same, uh, sarcastic things, which, you know, I look at my wife now and I'm like, you married your dad. Just, just so we're on the same page. She goes, ew. And then we move on with our lives. <laughs> so this is Brandy's father. Yes. Yeah. Brandy's dad. My, my father actually passed away. Um, oh boy. 13 years ago now. Yeah. Mm. So, yeah. It, it's one of those, as you get older, these are the, the things that eventually happen and you pull in the, the memories and the lessons yeah. learned from uh, the patriarch. You so know, when, all good. People, people are always wondering, Hey, you know, what age do you have to be to be old uh, or start calling yourself old? And I say, you know, I don't know if there's really an age, but, but there is an age and there's a time in your life where, you know you're kind of getting up there in years when you start to visit more funerals than you do weddings. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's that often uh, a meme or a joke that's out there that, um, you know, where, uh, you know, you're sitting there as a younger person and uh, you're at a wedding and then the uh, your parents or other older people poke you and go, ha ha, you're next. And then yeah. you do the same thing to them at funerals. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know. Have a little fun with that. It's probably not the, the best joke. Probably doesn't go over very well. Yeah, it depends on the it person. But my, <laughs> only but, people uh, that wear a shirt like this would uh, would make a joke like that. So, hey, true, true. If it's coming out of your mouth, I'm sure people pretty much know. Hey, listen, there's this guy named Dwayne. He'll be here today. Just whatever he says, don't take offense to it. Okay, that's just who he is. He's a sweet man on the inside. He's a sweet man. Yeah, yeah. It, I'm the I'm the friend that uh, people when they introduce me, they have that half hour monologue of, okay, this is who he, this is how he is, and there's yeah. no change. He has his good qualities, I swear. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> so if you noticed, uh, I, I have a new background every single day. This is the I same. Know. Yeah, this is the same room as last week. I just kind of turned the monitors around so that way you're not looking at an empty door, but. I still, I still don't have this my my game room set up, but um, there's a, the there's a good, yeah, yeah, the piano, the, the piano started. Uh, 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 is it in the, is it in the lanai or out on the balcony? Yeah, it? it's 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 in the lanai. Oh. Yeah, yeah. There's a okay. there's, there's a bunch of women with big big leaves fanning me whenever I play the piano. Yeah, Appreciate but uh, yeah, I, I you know I I it last week was like kind of an eye opener for me because I didn't think my PC was that old. And whenever I put that virtual background on and I look like Max Headroom cutting in and out, I realized if my PC came and handle a virtual background, it's probably time to upgrade it. So what I've been doing all week, and I, this will make you happy, Dwayne, is I've mm -hmm. been spending a lot of time putting together a custom PC build. And wow. I, right before the show, folks, I sent over my custom list to Dwayne for his stamp of approval. And Dwayne, I didn't do such a bad job, did I? You did a, a, a great job. I mean, he's uh, going i7. I'm going to nerd geek out here a little bit. But, yeah, the i7, 32 gig of RAM, two NVMs, uh, the, the gold standard supplies, all the a cool case. It's gonna, you don't have to do like a, a rig reveal kind of thing when, uh, when everything's put together. And I will tell you from personal experience here, and this will probably go right along with the, the show, the theme, and the folks that show up. But um, in, as in all things in life, you can never have too much thermal paste uh, to apply. Uh, I, I too have had, uh, some, uh, changes this past week, um, uh, doing upgrade, you know, for my show, the, the, the pissed off parent, uh, show, um, I've upgraded my CPU to, well, it's new to me. I'm, I'm cheap and I do things, but I've, I'm a Ryzen boy. They have the Intel Ryzen, uh, thing and the, and the cool, uh, cool people buy the Intels and the, and the cheap, you know, no gooders. They buy Ryzen. I'm a, I'm a cheap, no gooder. Oh, but, uh, I, okay. 
that's how it works. I, oh, I don't have the box anymore, but I, I picked up the uh, the Ryzen 3390XT, uh, which uh, is a 12 core. So I'm going to, you know, we'll, we'll have some benchmark tests when, you know, you get yours in and set up and I'll get mine. We'll see how they, how they go mono e mono, but yeah, I did that. And uh, that the, the, I applied what the recommended amount of thermal paste for the CPU for the fan and it immediately overheated. I cut it real quick and then um, did it, did put a full load on there. Like only Dwayne Ward can, and uh, it now works and nice and quiet and happy. So it, it, it's, it's all good. And that Man. was not meant to be innuendo, but if that works. If, if your PC outperforms mine after what I spent on mine, I'm going to be really mad. Well, I've got like 30 plus years building these things. And I, I've always found the, the cheap free way of doing stuff. Like, yeah. uh, well, and then can I also brag on something? I, I've, I've actually uh, done a holy grail uh, thing here, a, a light, and I and I'm not even joking. It's a lifelong pursuit of something. I finally have it, and let me just point to it. If I can point to it, I now have in my possession what is that? Fortress Maximus G1. <coughs> Fortress Maximus G1 sounds fancy. Generation one transformer. This is this is in the uh, the golden age of transformers. Uh, during the you know 83, 82, 83 through 88. Uh, run of Transformers, the cartoon, the, the the you know the heyday of of Optimus Prime and all that. But there was one that came out later. Is one of the later part of the G ones called Fortress Maximus. This used to be uh, for well, uh, talking to the poor kids, you have no idea what this even is. I, as I was one of them, I had no idea. This thing uh, retailed new back in 1987 for like a hundred and some odd dollars. Yeah, that's a lot. So back then. For, for everyone out there in TV land, that. Uh, equivalent the equivalent of that is your entire Christmas birthday and next Christmas uh, funds because yeah the, yeah the cost differential there but um, a, so, a guy, so is Fortress uh, Maximus a bad guy or a good guy he is a good guy he is the ultimate good guy he made a brief appearance in the last American uh, uh, series last American Generation One Transformer cartoon uh, back in the day which available on, on available on Tubi TV for free. Uh, but he is actually larger than Metroplex. Uh, well, literally, Let's see if I can find Metroplex. He's over. Oh, there he is, right there. There he is, right there, against the wall. That, okay. uh, that guy. But he was okay. equivalent in size to Trypticon. So those two were supposed to be the same size. Anyway, right. I know I'm probably losing everybody here, but I, I just had to share my G1 Holy Grail. Uh, my yeah. life is complete moment. I, I. I I'm happy for you, my friend. I'm happy for you, but I'm nothing makes me happier than the fact that you're already married because what you just described probably dried up a bunch of kitty cats. All right. Yeah. Oh, oh I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure. <laughs> and my wife is going, yep. I fell on the sword for all of womankind and took them off. The <laughs> Brandy, There's... thank you for taking one for the team. God bless you. <laughs> God bless you. All right. So, uh, hey, listen, so um, I decided to put together a few topics today that, um, you know, I get asked a few questions from time to time. Yeah. And it's about, uh, you know, the kind of the, the the status of the country, the status of the world, you know, um, how hard it is to, you know, raise kids that we want to um, raise and be proud of. Uh, that's the nicest mm -hmm. way I can say that, um, you know, I'm, I'm starting to find that that I am. <clears throat> watching the news less and less as the years go by because i just can't take it anymore I, I i honestly can't i can't take i can't yep. take the bud light controversy stuff i can't take the this that I, I, dude i'm 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 just i just don't i don't get uh, the bizarro world that we live in and um i think yeah. that i i'm you know you know what upsets me too is whenever we, they they have some controversial type of stuff like i'll just talk about the bud light Dylan guy for yeah. a second just because it's on my mind. I saw that right, right before I logged on. Is um, <clears throat> you know, they'll do an article, but then what they'll do is they'll cut off all the comments. They won't allow people to comment. And and, and that is yeah. So so you you know, <laughs> I have to believe that they cut these things off because they are overwhelmingly getting a bunch of people to oppose that oppose this viewpoint. Right. And um, in today's world, if you oppose a viewpoint that's controversial, you're considered this or that or whatever, racist and misogynist and, you know, sexist and all these things. And, and you know, to, in today's world, especially men, we don't get a voice anymore. You know, we don't we don't get to speak our mind because if we do, then we're not a real man. 
you know, and it's, and it's really, it, you, you're starting to see a lot more pushback than you ever have been. And I think that it's going to continue to be pushed back. Um, and what I'm really worried about, and I don't want to get into a whole bunch of consi- conspiracy theories, but if you notice, you'll have the rising of some men on podcast, um, social media, like this guy, Andrew Tate comes to mind real, uh, real fast. Uh, yep. Kevin Samuels comes to mind, you know, these guys, and, um, they start to build a platform that has a huge following and the powers that be will yep. make something happen to these guys. You know, it's, it's, it's like, yep. it's like you want to get out there and men want to have a voice with the way that Eric Carroll has a voice with dad talk today, but it's, it infuriates you whenever the if 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 you're the nail and the nail sticks up too high, then that nail gets hammered down, and you and you're seeing that a lot. With, with, yeah, boom, boom, yeah, boom. exactly, right. So it's like if if your platform gets too big, if you start to speak too much against the uh, opposing views of whatever whatever's woke today, then you're the nail that gets hammered in, and it's really sad. Um, mm-hmm. So, you know how do we fix this? Right. How do we fix it? Um, I don't know the ultimate answer, of course, but I'm going to give you my best thought on what the ultimate answer is. And it's, it's, it's a couple things. Number one, we have to do, we have to look in the mirror and we cannot change who we are fundamentally as men and women. If we have a viewpoint that goes against the grain, we must hold firm because there's a lot of us out there who still have traditional values, who still believe in God, who still understand what's right from wrong and who ultimately don't care if the Bud Light girls or guys of the world has their viewpoints. I don't think that anyone cares about this dude that he cross dresses as a woman. I just don't want my kids and I don't want to be, I don't want to be shown in my face all day long. I mean, let's be honest. If, 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 if me and my girl was at the mall and we were making out like two 15 year old lovebirds, you wouldn't want to see that either. What makes you think I want to see some of these other things? It's just about couth. It's about respect. And I don't want to cram right. down my face. And many of you, I feel, feel the same way every single day, you know? So I think that that's why we're seeing a pushback on a lot of these things. And I don't think that we should give in to the flow, the wave of this craziness that's happening, because I think the smart people in life, the forward thinking people, the men and women, they know where this is going to be headed. And it's going it's gonna, to it's gonna head down a road to where we are living in a world full of overly feminine women and emotional, I'm sorry, overly feminine men and emotional people in general. And, yeah, you know, um, I don't remember who said this on social media. This is not, I'm not, I'm not going to take credit for this. Um, I wish I could give credit where credit is due, but this man had said, he came from another country that was a country that was always being bombed. I think uh, Iran or not Iran. Um, one of those countries over there anyways, in the middle yeah, East. All of them. <laughs> yeah. All of them. Yeah. Pick one. Right. So he basically said, you know, whenever a country wants to come in and invade another country, we are mm-hmm. not worried about the women of that country. We're not worried about the, the children of that country. We're not worried about the elderly of that country. We are worried about the men of that country. Yep. And that's and because men, guys like you and I, and the people who are listening to say, if chaos manifests itself, we are the ones that will have to go on the front line with rifles and guns and defend oh, yeah. the women, the elderly and the kids. We are not the women, not the elderly, not the children, of course. So if you want to take over a country, then what you've got to do is you've got to take care of the men first, the 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 the, um, the yeah. war aged type of men. And yeah. what better way of doing that than make these men docile? I mean, if you can take the lion of a pack and turn him into a wuss, then you can take over that pack pretty easy in my eyes. And I think that's what oh, we're yeah. seeing. I think we're seeing a corrosion of masculinity. I think we're seeing a corrosion of, of manhood. And we're and we're going to get to a point, if we don't stop this, where we go down a road to where when another country comes over and says, I think America's on our mark this time, we're going to take you guys over. We're going to have a whole bunch of men that goes, I don't care. Come take it. I don't care. That's fine. And yeah. we're not going to have a bunch of men that that rose up to fight. Uh, what was that Boston Tea Party? They they had bloodshed over a two percent tax rate. I think it was. I think it was two yeah. percent. I mean, 2%. look where we're at now. Yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, many of us are having thirty or well, luxury 40- this past. Week. There was a, uh, a a a guy that went nuts in a New York subway. He had long history of 
of uh, mental issues and stuff like that. And a uh, retired Marine put him in a chokehold to prevent him from going further nuts. It had three people restraining him. He put him in a chokehold. The guy unfortunately passed away and now they're rioting uh, over this. I mean, it, which is it's basically teaching you and me that if something goes down, the old days, the old the old men of yesteryear who would stand in the way of tyranny and issues yep. should just say, oh no, be, I mean, my wife and I talked about this. You know, well, we're in Texas. We can talk, you know, certain things. I, I have the ability to defend myself a, a few different ways. Um, but if I were to see something going down, I've got to think twice because I'm like, I will get sued. I will get thrown in jail. I, all these bad, we just had a court case in Austin um, that's uh, in, well, in Texas for those that uh, aren't familiar with, with that. He actually, the person was actually convicted of, 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 of the M word. Um, and there was, there was the, the proof just wasn't there. I mean, we're being taught over and over to not get involved. And that's exactly what the enemies, whoever you think they might be, spiritual, physical, political, whatever, that's exactly what they want. They want to feminize. They want to just tear that down. That's how you do it. You get rid of men. Our court systems have been, are set up to now. I mean, this is obviously an area that I'm passionate about. And of course the platform of dad talk today, the courts are set up to emasculate men, remove them from the, the household. And we have decades of research and data. So, I mean, I started to take over, but that's, I mean, what you're saying is spot on. And we have the, the history is, is just full, uh, I say history, history then, history now and today is just full of examples of this happening. And it's got to stop. It's got to stop, man. And and guys, if you're listening right now, you know, and you have your morals and your values, don't let them don't let don't let them change because life keeps keeps uh, telling you that you should conform to whatever. We are not slaves, and we do not take a knee to anyone. One, so what we got to do, in my opinion, is we got to hold firm with our values and our beliefs in our core systems that we believe in. And the second thing we've got to do is we've got to rise up the next generation of good kids. So that way we can change the ideology of this nonsense before it gets way too far gone. And so what I wanted to do today is talk about some life lessons that we can teach our children and in order for them to grow up and be stand up good model citizens. And and these uh, these these life lessons I'm going to talk about again, you know, my platform is a little more directed towards the men, but they certainly are transferable skills to raising young women as well. Oh, yeah. but, all, but also, guys, you know, some of these life lessons that, you know, you guys are wanting to or maybe uh, planning on teaching your kids, you guys can learn some of these things yourself. And um, I honestly think that a lot of you guys do do that. I've noticed that a lot of my friends, you know, when I was growing up with them, we were we were hoodlums, just like many of you guys probably were. We were doing things that we probably shouldn't be doing, breaking the law you know, doing some things that are not very honorable. And um, I'm looking at a lot of these guys now, my guy friends, and they're, they have kids and they're, 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 uh, they're arguing, not arguing, but they're kind of like yelling at their kids, telling them not to do things. And I'm like, mm -hmm. <laughs> you are yelling at your, oh, uh, at, right back at yeah. And, and my buddy's like, yeah, you know, <laughs> So my point is, is that I think that um, I think having kids is one of those paradigm changes where it really not only helps you learn how to teach and lead other people, mm -hmm. but it, it's also it helps you grow by trying to teach other people. You know, one of the, I didn't start this podcast because I'm looking to make a bunch of money on it. I've spent more money than I've ever made on this podcast. I, I, I'll tell you how much I made on this podcast this much so far. And but I'm not, yeah, yeah, <laughs> negative. Right. So it's not about the money it's, you know, and I spend and Dwayne spends and Dwayne's been doing it longer than I have, but we, we do these because we are trying to give back to the community, trying to give back to the world you know, I truly believe that we all have different talents and we all have different skill sets. And Dwayne's skill set is his brain, his analytical brain and his communication skills and his charisma. And that is kind of mine as well. Dwayne thinks a little bit different than I think. But, you know, just like Dwayne and his uh, his stepfather, um, I'm sorry, his uh, father-in-law, 
Uh, Dwayne and I kind of come together like peanut butter and jelly also. I mean, I'm never going to buy the first generation Ultra Megatron Transformer. I'm not going to do it. But I can appreciate the fact that the man is passionate about that and it kind of fires me up a little bit. And there's things that Dwayne's probably not going to ever do that I do. But, you know, there's a mutual respect and understanding there and we can we can appreciate these things. We just like the fact that people that we care about have passions. And, uh, you know, we want people to, you know, wake up and have their passions, whether it's Transformers, whether it's going to the gym, whether it's starting your own podcast, whatever it is. But I started this podcast not because I was looking to make I was looking to monetize it. I started this podcast, honestly, for myself. And what I mean by that is that I don't know how much what do I spend? Probably a minimum of three hours to maybe six hours a week preparing for this stuff. Um, it's, it's, it's a considerable amount of time. Um, Mm. and I'm doing this for myself. And what I mean by that is I'm learning lessons that I probably already kind of knew, but it's really kind of solidifying in me and I'm becoming a better man. I'm becoming a better future husband for my wife. I'm becoming a better, um, individual and citizen for my country. And I'm becoming a better friend to all you guys because of the things that I'm doing with this podcast. So as we go through some of these life lessons today about teaching your kids, look at it and go, you know what? I do need to instill these things into my children if you feel that you need to, but also look within yourself too and go, how can I, how can I lead by example? You know, like it's, it's, it's one thing to, to, to tell, right? But if you are a leader at work or in your household or in your family, and you are not walking the same walk, but you're telling someone else to do it. It doesn't go over very well. Like you, you can't be the 300 pound deconditioned fat, lazy dude on the couch, bitching at your kids to eat healthier. It, you, you don't want to be that hypocrite because no one's going to look at you and, and respect, you know, your words. You've got the best way to lead is by example, Right. Be that man that your kids look up to and you don't even have to actually say the words. You're just doing the actions and they follow suit. Um, Mm -hmm. If you're a guy who goes to the gym, your little boy is looking at his strong dad going, you know what, dad, I want to go with you. And you're telling him, hey, you got to wait till you're 12 years old to go and then I'll take you. Or, you know, if you're on a softball team. Because that's your passion. Or if you play golf or whatever, you know your kids are going to want to mimic you. And they're going to want to get out there and be competitive and have fun and have passions. So consider leading by example if you guys don't. But let's go through some of the life lessons. And these are not in any particular order. I threw them together. I was really thinking about it. And, you know, um, these are some of the things that I really think that if you instill in your kids, they'll raise, they'll be raised up to be the kids, the kids that honestly America needs. And the kids that America needs to change this crazy mindset that we have today. And the lesson number one is to read each day or to learn each day. I have noticed that there are, there's not many, but there are few of my close friends. And these kids, their kids, they all love to play the console games, the Xbox, the PS3, their tablets, things like that. There are a few of my friends, though, that will not allow them to do that. Unless they pay the cost and paying the cost comes in like reading a book. So every week they say to them, hey, you can have four or five hours on the Xbox this weekend if you finish a book every week. I've got other people that say, I want you to finish at least one hour of reading. It doesn't have to be an entire book, but you got to spend an hour a week learning something or an hour a day, whatever it is. You know, dedicate, dedicate that hour each day to learning something new. If, you know, and if reading's not for you, then maybe audiobooks, because that's, I'm not a reader. I really wish I loved reading more than I do. I'm just not a fan. I read really, really well, but I just not, I'm not the guy who's going to sit down with a book in his lap and read. But audiobooks are something that I enjoy and including videos and podcasts. Mm-hmm. I, I, I told you guys this a couple weeks back. I made a commitment to myself years ago that I would spend at least one hour a day four to five days a week on my fitness and at least one hour a day to learning five days a week. And I still do that every single day. What's up, MJ? Um, So, you know, maybe, maybe also teach yourself to do something new, 
You know, Dwayne touched on this a couple weeks back. Uh, Dwayne, if you know a little bit about Dwayne's past, and some of you guys probably do, Dwayne did not grow up with a silver spoon in his mouth. He, he <laughs> quite, 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 quite the opposite, actually, right? And even when Dwayne became a man and an adult, when he first bought his house, he humbled himself and bought a house within his means when the people around him were buying houses twice as big as his. And mm -hmm. also, Dwayne knew that there wasn't a lot of expendable income to do the repairs on his houses when things ultimately go wrong. What did Dwayne do to compensate that? He he learned. He li Dwayne literally went out to the store and bought books on how to do plumbing, how to do electricity, how to do this, how to do that. And he developed skills that not only saved him thousands or his family thousands, but he's able to do things and take pride and his woman, when they needed to, I remember you telling me the story, you guys needed to change a faucet because the old faucet was broken yeah. or old or something. And yeah. you and your girl are looking at this faucet going, all right, so I re really like a new faucet and I don't know how the heck we're going to get this one out and put this new one in, but maybe we could hire someone. And Dwayne's like, no, no, actually, we just got to do this and this. And if I look under here, it, it actually should be a pretty good. Yeah, yeah, I, I can do it. And she's like, who are you? <laughs> and I want to jump your bones, right? And so, yeah. and so, and so, true story. <laughs> right, true story. And so, you know, women love a man that can lead. Women love a man that can take charge. And when a woman is unsure or in fear or under not understanding how something gets done, if her man steps up and goes, "Yeah, I just got to do this and this and that, that, that," yeah, no, no problem. I can get it done. Um, you want that one installed? Okay, cool. She will look at you with a a certain way she'll have you're building respect mm -hmm. in her eyes you you are you are solidifying her peace because she knows that when when things go wrong she can count on Dwayne. Dwayne's going to have a plan right and yes it's only a faucet but you you combine the faucet with this and that and this and that and this and there's 200 300 different things that Dwayne goes I got this. No, no, I got it. I got it. And it brings her the emotional peace that women need to have in order to feel safe and secure and, uh, and, and fall into her natural femininity with her man. Well, guys, mm -hmm. if no one's ever taught you this stuff, because we know that this stuff is not taught in schools, then how are you going to learn? Yeah. What are you going to do? I mean, I'll speak for myself. Okay. And I'm not saying I do this in all times because I, I, I know plumbing, I know electricity, I know drywall, I know a lot of these things. But mm -hmm. there are some things that are just beyond my scope, right? There are some things that, you know, even a book really can't teach you, a job site needs to teach you. I will outsource those things because it, there, there's a threshold where it, it becomes, oh, yeah. hey, if, if I try this, I could do way more damage than good. And I don't want to make my... Yeah, I don't want to make my house the very first, you know, trial and error run, right? But for everything light and medium, I think we should be striving yeah. to learn ourselves. And guys, there's really no excuse, right? I mean, there's YouTube, there's all kinds of things. Teach yourself plumbing. Teach your teach your kids how to change a tire. Teach oh, your kids yeah. on. Teach your, uh, Dwayne and I were talking about the, the the PC build before we jumped on the before we went live. Teach your kids how to build a PC. A, yeah. uh, play a new instrument, uh, et cetera. You know, grow your brain, teach your brain to learn and it will begin to learn fast. You know, because when you constantly teach yourself, you become better at problem solving. So even mm -hmm. though it was just a faucet that you learned how to do, what you really do, it's really less about learning how to fix a faucet or replace a faucet. It's more about, it's your brain is kind of like your muscles, guys. You go to mm -hmm. the gym, you work out microscopically, you're tearing muscle fibers. That's a good thing. When you rest those muscles, they build back stronger and bigger than the time before to adapt to the excess workload that you give it. Kind of the same thing as your mind in a, in a way. When you teach yourself things that are foreign or new, your brain mm -hmm. becomes really good at picking new things up. And we all know that when your kids get out to the workforce, that'll give them the edge over all the other kids. And we've all experienced when that doesn't happen and you're out in the workforce. Have you seen some of this? Oh, God. we all know about the, the video meme where that kid's crying about working, I think, a six-hour work shift at some 
coffee shop and then yeah. you know you, you work with coworkers that haven't been taught you just immediately know that they have never you know stood behind their dad with a flashlight changing uh something out and you know 100%. and it's show kind of thing i you, shouldn't write you like that yeah you you know that kid can't change a faucet <laughs> yeah, <I> mean, <laughs> The other thing, too, though, is that it teaches these kids confidence, like, uh, you know, like a million stories of stuff I've taught the kids over the years. But when they change the sp set of spark plugs, uh, which I taught my bonus daughter how to change spark plugs, when I teach them uh, those things, it gives them that confidence. And also, as you were talking about, uh, it's not so much the teaching of the change the spark plugs. They now understand some of the inner workings of a vehicle. So when something goes wrong, they don't just turn the radio up. They, yeah. they go, oh, well, it worked. You know, you put the parts together and it it's all these transferable skills. You get like a template, a project plan, if you will, on how to do other things that you may not. I mean, I could talk, I could do the whole psychological thing. But when you're going from things that you don't know to the things that you do, it's a charter that, you know, all that um, you're doing you, when you learn and build those confidences, you then can take it to a something where you don't know really anything about, but you transfer all those skills that you picked up on the easy stuff. And then this becomes easier. Yeah. Uh, just to really jump in, I, uh, for the pissed off parent.com site, um, one of the things that had been lacking is AI uh, chat functions and being able to do campaigning and, and, and all that. And the services they had out there were, I think, a couple thousand dollars. I basically developed one. And it's actually live. As, uh, you know, I spent my, spent my time last night getting it prepared. But there's now on the site a uh, AI chat function that then directs visitors to the area of interest, and it does all kinds of other fun stuff as well. But it's just that you know, I I, I never built uh, an AI chat bot before. Did not do it. But since I've had all these other transferable skills, I'm like, let's give it a shot. Let's go ahead and build the code, and then make it happen. That's the that you know, that's the output, and then it transfers to your kids. When they see you doing things, they go, "Okay." Versus me farming out and paying other people to do it, or being you know, or getting hosed while the the uh, the car mechanic tells me that my muffler bearings uh, are loose. They 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 get that confidence and know what to do. I mean, that there's just so many transferable skills uh, that it, it's so important for kids to learn. And sometimes it's not one. It's not just you telling them how to do it. That's another thing, but you showing them, you know, a, a certain uh, showing them how to do something to a certain point, but letting them do it because it builds so much confidence. And then that's the kids that you want out in the world. I mean, I see on I saw on Facebook, well, I see it all the time. Uh, someone saying, oh, my faucet, and my uh, my kitchen or my uh, bathroom went bad. I need to replace it with something else. Not even hard or not even, you know, the plumbing, just the actual faucet, the physical faucet would take anyone that knows anything about faucets about a minute to change. They're farming that out for six hundred dollars. Wow, that's ridiculous. Yeah. That that's an it's an I can't imagine anyone making that post, but more and more, that's what we're getting. the 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 time of yesteryear of people, you know, fixing stuff on their own, we've gotten so complacent. We're farming those easy things out. It's ridiculous. And I'm sorry, I went off on a rant, but <laughs> that no, stuff is just nuts. It's they're all great points. I mean, and so and so the common denominator of what you're talking about is is just you just become better at problem solving. So, yeah. I mean, Im imagine guys, how many problems or challenges you would fix if you were informed in a lot of fields, right? You would be able to help people in need. You'd be able to give your neighbor who has had an accident first aid if you learn how to do that. Um, yeah. You can also change your own car tire without the help of a mechanic. And just with those three skills or knowledge, you've made a new friend. You've saved a life and you save some money from not having to call a mechanic. So yeah. that's what I mean whenever I say it's more about a faucet. You learn. I mean, I am CPR and AED certified. And, and thank the Lord that I am, and, and I'll tell this story another time, but um, I don't know if it's just coincidence or if it's a lesson for me, but so far in my life, I've saved, I've had to do life-saving CPR or an AED or save someone from drowning five times in my life. Wow. So okay. um, um, the, the I, I saved the person from drowning. I'll tell you that story uh, another time. When I was on a cruise, but the other four that I had to do CPR or AED, um, all four of those people were 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 were, were they were dead, 
and um, I was able to save two, and unfortunately, I lost two. But without the knowledge of how to use an AED or to perform CPR, I would have never been able to save those two lives out of the four that I tried to save. Um, these were out of the blue, did not see it coming. They just had heart attacks, and one was in a sauna. I don't know. The doctors still don't know how why, why he died. I was able to bring him back. I hit him with the AED, and that dude came to life like Jesus touched him. Um, <laughs> those AEDs are something else. But, um, you know, who here can say they know how to use an AED? If someone was dead right now and there was an AED on that wall right over there, could you set the machine up and know where to put the pads and put a voltage of who knows how many volts into someone's chest and do it the right way without – keeping them dead. I, you know, my point is guys is learn something new because when you learn something new, I promise you, I, I promise you the two people, the three people that I saved their lives. We're friends now. I met a new friend, you know? Yeah. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> so if I ever have to call them in the middle of the night and go, Hey John, remember the day I saved your life? You know, can you come pick me up at the airport? John's coming to pick me up at the airport. <laughs> so, I'm not gonna leave you hanging. Yeah. They're gonna leave me hanging. You know what I'm saying? So I mean, I, I I like to think that those are ways that I'm giving back to the world and and um and it's helping me become a better man because I not only feel great that I've helped someone that needed the help, but man, I tell you, being in a uh, chaotic situation where it's a life or death and seconds matter, you I have developed skills from doing this so many times mm -hmm. where I don't get all flustered. I get actually in the, the very first time I was like, oh, my God, what do I do now? I start to kind of zero in and I go, you go call 911. You go grab the ED over there. You make sure that one else comes in this room. You keep everyone back. Go grab me some towels. And I'm starting to direct and I'm not getting chaotic in my own mind. I'm getting zeroed right. in. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, um, you could you could also like when you when you read or you listen to podcasts or you listen to whatever you could also learn it it, it it could earn you a job i mean think about this guys i mean a lot of jobs have nothing to do with 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 how many languages you speak but if you can take it upon yourself to learn new languages of your interest it wouldn't be that hard to find a job if you could speak 3 to 5 languages or even better write them i mean yeah. there, in some sectors like travel or tourism even if you lack hospitality, hospitality skills, the fact that you took it upon yourself to learn a new language gives you an advantage in those industries. In fact, five languages are is probably an overkill, as most people know, two languages or three at most. And knowing five, but five puts you in a position now to work as a spy, a highly paid um, um, interpreter, perhaps. Or you can right. even be hired for a corporate espionage. Look, I'm just saying. OK, I'm, yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying, if you ever want to be a spy, learn some languages, you know, um, my point is, is that you can take something that you have started off as I'm just going to learn something. I have, have a passion to it. And you could actually it could actually build your it could earn yourself a new job that you never thought that you would be able to do. Another benefit of learning is your confidence is hugely, hugely boosted. You know, mm -hmm. it's nice being in a room and being one of the smarter guys in a conversation. Also. Surprise, surprise. Another good reason, probably the most important reason to learn is because not everything you need to learn is taught in school. Exactly. I mean, guys, guys and gals, I mean, let's just be honest with ourselves. When we think about high school, how many things that we learn in school that do we still apply today? Some, not but there's a lot. lot, but there's a lot of things that we had to learn ourselves, wasn't there? There's a oh, lot yeah. of times where, as an adult, we we sit back and go, you know what, you know what, no one ever taught me this shit. You know, I I, I probably could have learned how to uh, figure out how to balance a budget, or I, it, it would have been yeah. really helpful if I had to learn how to do this or do that. It would have served me. It would, it would have served me well. But you know, instead, we're teaching people calculus and things that they're never going to apply. Most people will never apply it unless you're specifically in science or engineering. You'll likely never use calculus, guys. I, of course, I know algebra. I know how to add, subtract, multiply, divide. But I use I use a calculator more than I write it out. And I think we're all in the same boat. I'm not saying that we shouldn't have learned it. What I'm saying is that there's a lot of things where I think we could take these out and plug those in. You know, oh. um, 
to Go kind ahead. of get to it, and probably it's a lightning topic because colleges have changed a lot. But when I went to college 20 now plus years ago for my bachelor's, um, I was lucky with the professors that I had. Well, most of the professors I had. But um, I hope everyone understands, like when you go to college and learn certain things, you're not learning those things. You're not learning what to think. You're learning how to think. When you yeah. learn trigonometry, uh, algebra, and topics that are, you know, that you would think you don't use in your everyday world, it's kind of like that whole faucet thing. You learn how to, you know how to change the faucet. It teaches you the principles to then evaluate other things in life. You know, me learning poetry in uh which is the only class i got a c in uh in college because i i'm just that's not my background but it stretched me it taught me a few things but it colleges to teach you how to think not what to think that's kind of the overriding theme of what i wanted to say because so many people you know they they walk in there yeah the, the that dunning kruger effect curve that i love uh, talking about you know people are get told what to think and they go out there and they don't know anything uh, whereas if they, you know, spend some more time and get further down that bell curve, they'll understand how to think. Working on a car teaches you how to program, even though you don't have to know the language. You you take those skills of the, you know, this equals that. You put this together. I mean, we all have seen that meme where the 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 person is putting the mattress into a little Datsun, uh, and then you go, you know, that. The, some people have not done those old, those little baby things where they put the squares and the triangle and all that into the yeah. little toy. And it's like, some people never did that as a kid and it shows and you see that, <laughs> you know, person trying to shove that mattress into, you know, that, that's what, you know, college and, and, but I, I will agree with you. I wish that schools taught, um, tax, how to do taxes, what they mean, um, what, you know, the different forms of markets and business related courses versus the stuff that they're pushing now. I, I say a little bit of authority since I've, you know, put two and a half children through our, uh, our education system and oh boy. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's, full of, you know what, that's, I could go off on a long diatribe there. Like I always do. I'll stop now. Um, it, you know, it's, 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 it's good stuff. Um, and, you know, I hope that the men listening to this never have to be in a situation where they're in a life or death situation. But, you know, as a masculinity coach, um, I, I want every, I want all of us, especially men to be able to prepare for the worst should it happen. Um, yeah. You know, like look at these comments here. You got skip who, um, you know, ex firefighter and medic. Listen, if chaos manifests itself, that's a guy I would want next to me because you know, this guy has a level head and he's, he's getting things done. Same thing with MJ. I mean, he, he doesn't know how to he doesn't know how to use machines, but he he can he can patch you up if he gets shot, and and he can carry bodies. So there you go. Yeah. Uh, just wanted to put it out there for all the dads that are at a low point. Everything's going to be okay one day at a time. That's right, Damien. It will. Well, I wanted to comment on that, and then also what MJ yes. and Skip and, and a lot of others uh, said. You know, the, the one day at a time. Um, uh, people have heard me talk about turn your pain into purpose, and for guys that are at a low point and girls that are out there that are at, at a low point. Um, one of the things that I tell a lot of people do is to turn your pain into purpose. And again, Skip, I'm glad you're doing, you, you know, firefighter medic, glad to have you when you did it. And then here, but using that as an example, you know, I would hope that Skip is now teaching others how to do medic stuff and firefighter things and how to save lives, you know, and if he's having issues in his personal life to turn that pain into a purpose, which is then to teach others. And, you know, for, Therefore, is that you know, so going back to that, um, you know, everything's gonna be okay. Take it one day at a time, and that's one. That's one of the reasons why I tell people turn pain into purpose. Because, and I think someone else commented uh, also about you know, you know, just uh, trying to you know keep moving forward. Um, when you're in that pain, when you're having these the problems, and you don't know what to do. Start, you know, help others. Put, you know, try to learn something new because that one gets your mind off of it and gets you back into a positive headspace. It does work. You know, but dwelling on it and sitting, that's for a certain type of person to sit there paralyzed and not be able to do it. Back to your uh, your point earlier is that when that person, you know, oh, my heart and, and went down, everybody else went, oh, my God, oh, my God, and went into panic mode and probably froze. And you having done other things, you went, OK, here's the process. You you, you manned up and you, you you took charge and you got it done. And we need those people I uh, need people like, you know, Skip and MJ and all the other people that are out there. If, if I didn't say your name for stuff you did, I apologize. I'm just, you know, scanning the all the comments. 
But, you know, that's where we need you to go out there and show other people, teach other people and, you know, form that relationship, teach people to, to how to do this and, and make things better. Sorry, I again went off on a, another. We love your rant. tangents, buddy. We love them. I, and, guys, and, and guys and gals, um, you know, put your put your thoughts in the comments. Some of you guys yeah. are watching and watching us on YouTube and some of you guys are watching us on Facebook. Go ahead and pop in the comments and um, and, and get get, get involved with, with the show with us. Um, and um you know, let us know if you support what we're saying or if you think we're off on something. But, oh. you know, what, one of the things I think that learning new skills and just learning in general helps us do, and we need this far more than we ever needed it in society, is it helps us say goodbye to propaganda and stereotyping. You know, the, 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 the oh, yeah. You know, we, we start to get a little more smart about the news channels and, and propaganda. You know, oh, yeah. n knowledge changes perception. And the more you know and read about things, the more your perception changes about the world or the situation. It's a right. it, it's it's a dark world living your life on myths when actually you would benefit a lot from living your life on facts. The only way yeah. you're ever going to move away from the myth, propaganda, and stereotype is through experience or by reading more, um, thus making yourself more knowledgeable and informed. Even yeah. the way that you act and reason towards certain things completely changes because you're now acutely informed with facts that you have learned, thus change is the is, is the end result of true learning. Um it's no like we've all read the comment section when the media puts something out there and you see the comment section completely drag whoever wrote that article and people are saying well you didn't tell the whole truth because this is what happened <laughs> actually the facts are this happened and that happened and so if the more you learn the more educated you become the more you realize that the world around you is trying to make you see what they want you to see and not oh, what yeah. the true world world actually is so mm -hmm. that's another good reason if any to teach your kids to learn so that way they're not brought up on this tiktok world of false reality where they think that the world is nothing more than acquiring a whole bunch of followers and comments uh, because when your life is based around how many people follow you, when that platform goes away, your life is meaningless. So get red pilled, baby. Um, also, you know, better decision making, attaining new skills, discovering new talents that you might have, becoming open minded and, and a good thinker. So that's that's my first tip, guys, is making sure that you learn. You, you teach your kids to learn. Um, mm. The second thing I would I would I would have you guys kind of teach your kids is to avoid quick pleasures. Really make sure they do this. Sit down and talk to them about drugs and alcohol. Let them know that those roads are, um, they, they, they feel good, but they always end in, in, in a dead end. There, no one, I mean, a lot of us are in our 30s, 40s, 50s, and 60s listening to this, right? There's a couple people in their 20s. But how many times have you ever heard any of your friends or anyone that you know say, yeah, you know what? I sold drugs for 20 years now and I'm retired, you know? It was a good life, had a good run. And so things are things are stepping up for me. You know, I mean, I was able to do this. I met these people. Listen, there's no good, there's no happy ending with that. There's no happy ending with it. You know, physical yeah. addiction. Watch out for physical addiction. Watch out for emotional addiction. Um, you know, uh, th these, these are things, these are negative things that come when you do drugs and when you drink too much is you get physically addicted, you get emotionally addicted. There's an enormous expense that comes along with it. It degrades your health. You're more prone to accidents. People who drink and do drugs statistically are more likely to end up in a car crash or even worse, a serious bodily injury or fatality. You can get arrested for drug possession. You, could, you squander your full potential that God gave you. And we all know this to be true. You destroy personal relationships and mm -hmm. there's always the fear of an overdose. I mean, those are five, six, seven reasons to not do this, guys. And there are some of you listening right now that are going through this. Some of you have reached out to me and told me about this. Guys, keep pushing. I know it's it's not easy. It's it's easy to say it. And it's one of those things where we all know that we should not be doing it, but it's hard to break that habit. But trust me, you've got a family here. You've got a support system. Keep pushing. 
I'm 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 in the midst of 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 of, of working and helping someone who's close to me right now. Um, her a family members of hers is going through um, something of this. I don't want to get too personal, but um, I the point is is I've seen how it has affected her, and I've seen and heard how it has, it has affected her family. Not I mean there's a large expense because the family's helping out, and but more importantly the emotional damage that has caused the family um, over these last four, five, six, seven months, or heck, I think it's even going on longer than that. This, this family member has been in and out of these rehab places. And, you know, the, the family member will, um, you know, um, relapse and the entire family is worried about that person's health and wellness. It's just, it takes an emotional toll, not only on the person that's going through the addiction, but guys, overusing drugs and alcohol is kind of like suicide. You don't escape your pain all you do is transfer that pain to someone else suicide doesn't stop the pain it just transfers to, to someone else drugs and alcohol doesn't stop your pain because trust me your bills are still due when you come back to reality but, yep. yeah but you you damage the people that love you and you ruin relationships and you squander your own potential be sure to teach your kids the best you can to avoid these things and have those conversations lesson number three is to learn to communicate at a high level. This is one of, if not the most important traits, and I just was good at communication, but this one has served me more and has made me more money and gained me more status and helped me date the kind of women that I wanted to date and have the kind of friends that I wanted to have more than anything else, more than even learning, I think, is to, be, to communicate at a high level. Now more than ever, kids, are on their phones, on their tablets. They're not being social. They're not playing together. They're just, they're just a different breed. But the kids out there in this next generation that have any sort of communication skills are going to rise to the top because sales jobs and leadership jobs are not going away. Amazon can't make a salesperson to connect with people. They can sell products on a website, but you are still going to need face-to-face -face human beings, and it's not going mm -hmm. away anytime soon. One of the highest paid jobs out there in this world that does not require a college education is something in management and sales. I know a lot of people who are selling that are making six-figure salaries, and some are making substantial amount of money. Teach your kids from an early stage to communicate well, from personal relationships to business to your workplace. Communication is a make it or break it skill. So among all the benefits, communicating will help you form closer relationships with people, bring cohesion to teams, and even take on leadership roles. And we know leadership roles pay more than non-leadership roles. I want your kids to make some money. Great communication involves both speaking and listening, obviously. So expressing and receiving. It's not just one-sided. The goal here is to develop and share understanding of information that's being talked about. That's the ultimate goal. You have to take what's in your mind and be able to use the English words, assuming you're speaking English, and form those thoughts into words that make sense for people to understand. That is the fundamental basis of communication. It's the root of what makes us human, and it's a core part of our society. Great communicators enjoy more fulfilling relationships and they connect faster than others on many, many levels. Jordan Peterson, I don't know if you guys know who he is. If you don't start oh, yeah. to look at his stuff, he's extreme, probably one of the most brilliant minds of our, of our decade. He said, mm -hmm. if you can think and speak, if you can think and speak and write, you are absolutely deadly. Nothing can get in your way. That's what Jordan said about communication. So yeah. You know, um, beyond enabling us to, to have rapport with others, communication plays significant roles in many aspects of our personal and professional lives, guys. I don't have to drive this point home. Every one of you guys know it to be true. Please do not forget to teach your kids to communicate at a high level. Do not allow them meet or me mediocre communication. Uh, tip number four, be honest and have integrity. Honesty, <laughs> honesty helps in building lasting relationships. It promotes trust and respect. It builds good reputations. It sets you apart from the other people. 
people will not take your words for granted and you will be proud of yourself. Okay. Every one of us listening to this, who anyone who's over the age of 30 has already learned this lesson. The life has a way of teaching you this. Trust is something that takes a long time to build. It takes a minimum of months, more like years, but you can lose it like that. One you time. do one time, guys. You do one thing and it can ruin the trust you have. And even if it's something that you can bounce back from, you'll never have that person's 100% trust. The best you'll ever have from them is 99%. Can I offer an sure. analogy and a quick story? Give it to analogy me. for those that love the picture thing. So pretend this piece of paper is 100% looking good and not whatever. So this is this represents trust. When you lie to somebody, you do that. You can apologize all day long, change whatever. But at the end of the day, see if I can actually open this up, this is what you're left with. You're left with kind of a crumpled. You're going to have an amount of it, but it's not going to be that good. That, so there's my analogy. So the point he's making is, is that, you know, the paper was fresh and new and unscathed. He wrinkles it up. He, and even if he can make things right, amend what he did wrong, that would be like opening the piece of paper up. And he can rub it on the edge, edge of the table and try to make it as smooth as he can. But the reality is it'll never look the same as it did when he first, before he crumbled it up. So I want to offer a quick story, if I could, that just happened this last week and involves my favorite topic. Um, you and you've talked about this throughout the entire podcast and all your other ones about, you know, you having integrity and that being in you. And I've actually I taught this lesson to my uh, well, my two sons and uh, my son's girlfriend last night, as a matter of fact, so quick. But and that's not actually the story, but uh, basically it's having integrity and morals and everything you do. And it's based on who you are, not who you're working with and how you do things. And then the quick story is uh, this uh, my holy grail. Fortress Maximus, get to put him in there again. Uh, Fortress Maximus, my holy grail, I actually purchased that off of uh, Facebook Marketplace and I paid a, a decent amount, much cheaper than I should have paid, uh, but got a great deal. And it was, it was a, it, anyway, the guy met uh, Peter Cullen, the voice of Optimus Prime, it all worked out. Anyway, this guy messed up and actually, after it sold, he canceled the transaction and he mailed it to me. It got to me. I got it. And he uh, got a hold of me and said, hey, you know, everything's good. If you can go ahead and release the money. And I explained to him how marketplace worked, that, you know, money's held in escrow and all that. And he goes, oh, oh, it looks like I messed up and I canceled the transaction. How many people do you know? And let's just be honest here. Would have went, well, sucks to be you. Too bad. So sad. Right. Never, not even cry. I mean, I was like, dude. Got his uh, PayPal information, shot that out to him. Great guy done. And But that's a, and it's not, and it's, again, this isn't like, you know, look at me. This is, you are a moral person. You have integrity. Other people may have done that, but that's not you. And that's, I think, part of the, what I'm trying to say is just because other people are shysters doesn't mean you are. And even when you're dealing with a shyster, you, you have your morals. You don't let them impact you. Yeah. And there's your... Uh, Pop, pissed off parent, one to grow on comment. No, that's good. I, I, I tell you what, you know, no matter if you believe in God or if you believe in the universe or you believe in karma, you know, when it comes to integrity, you will pay the cost. And it may not yeah. be this, it, may, it, may, it may not be tomorrow, but uh, I think everyone on this podcast here knows that if you do something wrong, if you go sideways on someone, if you do the wrong thing, you're going to pay. You're going to, you're going to, you're going to pay it back. Maybe not to that person. But maybe a loss of a job or a loss of a relationship or a loss of something financial. You know, um, no one gets to come out of this uh, this life without some scars. So just try to put as much positive out there. Do the right thing. So raise your kids with integrity. Uh, the five, the, the fifth life lesson I would love for you guys to teach your children is, and and this one, this one um, I learned later in life, probably in my mid thirties, is to don't go to work for a check. Go to work to learn. Okay. Mm -hmm. If if you are starting on fries at McDonald's, cool. You got to start somewhere. But you're Honorable not job. going. Hey, exactly. I mean, and it builds good integrity, builds good skills, it builds discipline, things like that. Right. I think 99.999% of everyone's going to say, okay, I'm going to, I want something better for myself than fries at McDonald's. Cool. So while you're there, 
do the best you can to yeah. coddle relationships and um, learn as much as you can. Okay. Yeah. Learn, learn as many lessons that fries at McDonald's can teach you because when you move that to the next job, those will be transferable skills. Plus the people that you'd meet at McDonald's today in 20 years from now, they might be the VP of acquis and merchants, uh, you know, VP of, you know, you know, uh, foreign domestic freaking currency at JC Port, JCP Morgan or something. you never know. And when the v, when and the v, when the VP of JC uh, Morgan and you talk and you guys are sitting down and this guy's making multiple six figures and you say to him, remember back in the day when you and I were fries at McDonald's? You, you don't think that guy's going to you, <laughs> you don't think that I've guy's going to get you a job? What's that? I've actually talked to him and Jackie Diamond. It was not for a positive reason, but. Um, I sent an e I used to work for JP Morgan and I sent out an email, uh, side note, important spell check, everything you send out on company wide email. Um, <laughs> funny story. Uh, but there's a, 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 when, a, 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 when you send out an email apologizing for something, you sometimes misspell the word inconvenience. And I was sorry for my incontinence. Oh. It was a new story. So yeah, yeah, it was, yeah, so it was fun. I got to got to talk to the the head guys at uh, JP Morgan. It was fun. Anyway, sorry. So you know firsthand. I firsthand. <laughs> I know firsthand. But um, you know the, the the people that you build relationships with, they 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 oftentimes circle around, and that's going to be another um, one of my lessons here coming up before we hit fifteen. But uh, go, but basically go to go to go to don't go to work for a check, guys. Okay, just don't go to work to, to check. Go to work to learn. The sixth lesson is, and you knew this was coming. You, if you know anyone who knows me, knows this one's coming. Work out and stay in shape. <laughs> Work out and stay in shape. I, I people will treat you differently when you are physically fit, because when you walk down the street and you're a physically fit woman or a physically fit man, people can see your discipline. When you walk down the street and you're 50 pounds overweight, people can see your lack of discipline. They will talk to you differently. I'm triggered. <laughs> Dwayne, I, I triggered Dwayne. He's gonna log off now. But no, man, I'm I'm proud of you. You're doing really, you're doing well. Keep keep it up. But being physically fit has opened up doors that probably would have never been opened up for me. People treat me yeah. with respect quicker. Um, people yeah. know that whenever I say something, I'm likely to do it. Why? Because subconsciously they know. This guy can stay the course. He eats well. He trains. This guy is disciplined, you know. And right. some of the most successful people on in the world will have a workout regimen because of the discipline that it takes. Right. If you're disciplined to do things like work out and eat good, when no one is holding you accountable, when no one's sitting in your living room at 8:30 p.m. watching you not eat a bag of Doritos, then you'll then you can easily do the things when people are watching. Number seven, eat clean. Eat clean. Think of it this way. If if you were to have, if you were to buy a house, okay, and I said to you, Dwayne, um, I'm gonna give you this house. Um, it's given to you, you don't have to pay for it. Here's the here's the caveat. This is the very last house you'll ever have. You gotta live in this house all the way until you die. Okay. If that was a scenario, would you take extra special care of that house? Yes, I would not treat it like a 2,000-year-old monument with month with uh, you know crackling and monkey shit on it. Yeah, <laughs> you'd, you'd make sure that the preventative maintenance was, was being done, the seals oh, yeah. were good. You'd do all the things necessary to keep that thing standing tall because yeah. it's the only house you're ever going to have. Yeah, that's like our bodies, folks. You only the body you have right now is the only body you're ever going to have. Treat it well. Treat yeah. it well. Because if you don't not like an amusement park. What's that? Not like an amusement park. Right. Not like an amusement park. Or a right. Car. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> don't treat it like a rental car. Exactly. You know, treat it well, folks. Eat clean, work out, you know, and, and that there's your preventative maintenance. Because staying in good physically, good, good physical shape. It will add another five to 20 years to your life. You know, be around for the people that you love. Be around for the people that, that love you. Um, so number six is work out and stay in shape. Teach that to your kids at, at an early age. 
Number seven is eat clean. Instill the instill the notion to them that you know the cookies and the popsicles and the ice cream and things like that. Those are luxuries that you can have on one offs. But for the most part, we're going to eat healthy because this is the only body that we have. Um, Guys, also, while I'm thinking about it, don't forget to support and like the page and the video by mm-hmm. subscribing to the channel. Be sure if you're on Facebook or, or especially YouTube, hit that like button for us. And right next to it is a subscribe button. If you guys subscribe to the channel, then when that talk live today goes live, you guys will be able to get notified. Make sure you push the bell icon so that way you guys will be able to be alerted whenever we do go live. But I do appreciate your comments and I do appreciate the like button being pushed because it helps the algorithm for other people besides you to see ours, our page when they start scrolling through the social media. Um, number eight, and this is a lesson that I think probably a lot of you do teach, but let's make sure we drive it home. Make money, make money, especially if you're a man. Unfortunately, and I say unfortunately because I don't think it's the right, I think we should be valued for more than just what we can provide to the world around us. But as men, we already talked about this, men have to go through life on hard mode. We don't get to go through life on easy mode. Okay, men are oftentimes only valued for what we can provide for our community, our country, and our family. Many of you guys out there right now have had a healthy relationship and when mental illness or depression or a layoff happened Mm -hmm. and your ability to provide finances and resources ended, so did your relationship. Yep. That woman left some of you guys. And how are you not expected to think a certain way when you're left there in an empty one bedroom apartment with a mattress on the floor when you used to have a house and you used to have kids running through your house and you had a couple dogs and you had the life that you dreamed of. And now you're living mm-hmm. in a one bedroom studio apartment with a mattress on the floor. And it's all because your ability to provide resources were cut off for whatever reason, your fault, or maybe not even your fault. It sucks. We're not going to go down that road and talk about that today. We'll save that for another discussion, but men know that to be true. Okay. Men, men know it to be true. So it's important to make sure that we don't look at money as the root of the of your happiness because money and happiness don't always correlate to each other. To a certain degree, it does. But we definitely have to make money if we're going to be if we're going to be able to attract and acquire the lifestyle that we want, the woman that we want, the family that we want. The the, the family is going to be looking at us as a, as a last stop. So we 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 need to be making sure that we're making some money. So whatever we do, whatever ideas we have, all the learning that we do, let's try to correlate that into into making an income. Um, And number nine, the the ninth tip I would would have taught my children is to build your network. Um, This is another lesson that I've learned far too late in life. And we talked about a little earlier whenever I was talking about relationships, okay, Mm -hmm. and being on fries and McDonald's and 20 years later, the guy's a VP. This is what I meant. Build your network. Your, listen to me well, your net work is your net worth. Your yeah. net work, the people that you know, is your net worth. Folks, the last five jobs that I've had were all from my network of colleagues. The job yeah. I just took was a person that I worked with years ago that called me up. And said, hey, this is the opportunity I have right now. I was asked Mm -hmm. who would be a good director. I thought of you. What do you think about this opportunity? And the next thing you know, there's a change in careers. And every time you change in careers, more than not, especially when you're making the change, not when the change is forced, but when you're making the change, you're making the change like this. You're going up and up. My point is, is that that is how you make more money. Have you ever heard the term? It's not what you know, it's who you know. That's what it's okay. talking about. That's that, that's yep. what we're talking about, folks. Um, some of your friends that you meet 10 years ago or even today and in 10 years from now, they're going to start their own businesses. And most are going to be unsuccessful, but one or two out of 10 are going to be successful. And if you are a good, if you're a guy who just knows marketing, if you're a guy who knows how to do social media, if you're just a good hard worker, fill in the blank. And 
people who are running businesses need good people. They need dependable, trustworthy, hardworking people. And if you're that guy and he remembers, hey, there's a guy named Dwayne. This dude is a brainiac when it comes to IT. Plus, he's a stand-up guy. People love working with him. He's fun to be around. He, he would fit the culture and do a great job for us. Well, what is he doing nowadays? Well, I think Dwayne's doing this, that, and the other. Well, do you think he'll be open to maybe a career change? I don't know, but I could ask him. Give, give Dwayne a call and see what he thinks. Hey, Dwayne. Hey, bud, remember me? Yeah, man, it's been a long time. How's the kids? Whatever, whatever. Oh, by the way, here's who I'm working right. with. Here's what's going on. What do you think? And then Dwayne starts going, okay, cool. That sounds good. That sounds good. Let's talk about this. And then Wayne goes to his wife, Brandy, and goes, hey, listen, I got an opportunity that, that brings me another 30 grand a year. What do you think? That's how some of the more successful friends and family get there. They go from here to here to here. And it's not because they're on Indeed or Monster.com filling out applications amongst the three other hundred people doing it. Trust me, that does work, but it's very, very rare. Your network is your net worth. Teach your kids how to communicate well, get along with others, build lasting relationships through their integrity and their trustworthiness and their honesty. And they will always be remembered for the kind and caliber of man and woman that they are. And it will open up doors in the future. I wanted to bring up something real quick that I, I, I know I'm like detracting, but I think it's things you were saying here are like, you know, bomb nugget gold stuff here, but you said something and, and I, I know you meant it and it was unintentional because I know some people uh, don't, uh, they think a certain thing about like the, the MIG tower, the strong man or the whatever, but you made a comment that I, I mean, and I, this is what I do. This is how it works in, in my relationship with Brandy White, and which is also why relationships are so important. This is that whole 20 pack thing is when you said I got the job offer, I went to talk to my wife and work and talk with her. Um, let me unpack that just a little here. That's right. when we talk about relationships. Um, your net worth, uh, your network is your net worth. It's not just in business. It's the people that you have around me. I actually had this conversation with my youngest son last night. I've, I've told it to other people is I look at it as like a, a tree ring of your relationships. You have in the center ring, the people that are your ride or die that you can call them up at two in the morning. I'm in jail. You got to bail me out, whatever. Those, those are the guys. And I have, you know, a, a few people like well, one or two people like that. And then there was the the, the bigger ring where they're, they'll hang with you and, and they're trustworthy for the most part. And, and it goes, you know, it goes out to the people that you have a one time conversation with. And that's it. I mean, it, it's, you know, just to summarize that. And, you, you know, one, you want to be that guy in the middle, but then understand, you know, that you may not always need to put yourself out there for the people, a whole different conversation. But that's the relationships. And you want to tie yourself, where I'm pulling this around to the comment that you made, is you want to tie yourself to uh, your spouse, your partner in crime, um, that I say lovingly, with someone that you can, that balances you out. You know, I am half a person. Um, my my wife is half a person. Together we make a whole person, a whole unit partner, you know, making our empire together. And what you said was so on point that, you know, had I got that, um, job offer, I sit in her and I, and I talk about it and I bounce off her position because she has different experiences that, that complement mine and we can figure out the best thing to do together. But <laughs> for everyone going, yeah, there's the one thing I am still the man of the house and that's my role, not my, I think I'm all that, but my role, someone's gotta be the decision maker. And yeah. After evaluating all that, the man has to make the decision and either benefit from all that, suffer the consequences or whatever, you know, comes out of that. But that is, I mean, that's the the the, the relationship piece there and making sure that you have people around you, uh, either romantically, socially, whatever, that complement and can make you a better person and improve your net worth. Sorry, I had to do that. You, I mean, you when you said it, you know, you, I mean, you were making the comment and it was on point. Um and, but I wanted to capitalize on that because I know there are people that will say, well, you know, guys that are, you know, we're men, man, man, we hate women. We, we think that they're, it, it's not that at all. We, um, I want my wife involved. She, we had a situation last night um, that happened that she handled it as a woman, 110% correctly. Yeah. Had I done it as a man would not have worked out that well. And I had to offer the man position on resolving this issue and it worked out, but we complimented each other and it was a successful encounter and got everything resolved. And I'm being purposely, I'm trying to be general and not trying to be shady or whatever, but it was a, a conflict that happened uh, with somebody else and 
but we both handled it as partners and it was a strengthening good thing. And that's, again, goes back to the relationship, but the uh, thing when we, when we talk about man, this man, that we're talking, women are just as important as men. We value good in them. We value good women and we want to be good men. And when those things come together, magic happens. All right. Sorry. Back yeah, to you. No, uh, you're, <laughs> again, you're always spot on. And, and, you know, when you teach your kids to be communicative, when you teach your kids to have trust and honesty and integrity, when you teach your kids to learn and not go for a paycheck, all these things start to come together perfectly. The pieces to this puzzle start to really form the picture that you want for your kids. And to Dwayne's point, it'll help you have a core of good, solid, honest people with integrity in your kids' lives for them to sound off on to get advice mm -hmm. that is needed for them. You, I know you guys will always be there for your kids, right? But if your kids if you're not there for your kids, let's say that the Lord takes you too early or or you're 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 not able to answer your phone. I don't know. I want you guys to sleep well at night knowing that your kids are going to be OK because you raised them right. Yeah. I want you to know that your kids will be OK, because even with your absence, they've got a core of three to five good men and women that truly mm -hmm. want their best you know, life for them that they can go to and say, hey, I've got something going on. What do you think about this? What do you think about that? Let me give you, let me, let me go ahead and, and, and give praise to a couple people here. Also, mm -hmm. um, there are a couple people who are watching right now that are in my very close. Like if I had to look at five people that I, I love these people and they are mm -hmm. important to me. They're valuable to me. He is one Jesse. That is a guy that I've went to for many, many years that um, we, I, don't, I mean, Jesse, how many hours of conversations have we have? The next one, Kelly, love her. Um, she is one of the most influential, influential people that I've ever met in my entire life. Um, there is no better woman than that woman right there. She is a stand up, good hearted person and her, she has two daughters and those daughters are making moves in life. They're doing very well. And they're, and if I had kids, I would want my kids to be raised the way that Kelly raised her kids. They're just, Good job. they're, they're, they're contributors to society and she should be very, I know she's proud of her girls, but I'm proud of Kelly for how well she's raised her kids. So I want your kids to have, sorry. What was that? Applause. What was that? A sound effect? <laughs> <laughs> oh, the, yeah, sorry. Hit the applause button. I mean, yeah. Good oh, job. So oh, gotcha. Good. Yes, yes, yes. So, so yeah. you know, you know, who are your ride or die people? And who are, if your kids are old enough, do they have ride or die people? And maybe they don't, maybe they're not old enough to have built enough relationships because you really have to be, you know, past your 20s or whatever. But my point is, guys, is is instill these lessons in their life and, and let them understand and know the importance of these people and how they're going to help them make very important decisions in the future. Um, let's go on to lesson number uh, uh, number 10, okay? And this is a big one, especially for my females, but also for my guys. Number 10 life lessons mm -hmm. to teach your kids. Do not have children outside of wedlock. Don't do it. Don't do it, folks. Okay. Oh, there are people who have had children outside of wedlock right now that are listening. And you guys know how hard you had to have had, how hard you had to deal with it. I, when, when kids, especially men, you, you're getting out there, you're messing with women in your early 20s, and you end up impregnating one of these women. You've pretty much, I don't mean to be rude or brash, you pretty much just guaranteed your life of struggle. You yeah. don't even have enough money to pay for yourself to have a place. Now you're going to bring a baby into this world and take care. You can't even take care of yourself, man. How can you, how can at 23 years old or 21 years old, how can you take care of a woman and your child if you can't even pay your own bills? You're far too young. Teach your boys to not even deal with women until they hit their 30s. Put their head down, work two jobs, work 50, 60 hours a week. And when they pick their head up in their 30s and their testosterone levels start to go down or they're not such a horn dog and they actually are looking for a 
wife and a family, and they now have gained enough traction to be able to afford that family, then start messing with these women. Okay. Don't put scars on these women's heart and, and ringing up their body counts and when you open. know you're not going to do anything with them other than just leave them. Okay. I'm not saying don't have relationships. I'm saying let's not get out there and make mistakes well, that are going to affect the rest of our lives. This is a go to pissedoffparent.com and review any of the information. You can click anywhere and you'll know not to do it. Right now, and you think the government's going to help you out, right now they are trying to pass retroactive child support bills, which will essentially uh, ruin your income for the next 18 to 21 years of your life, depending upon your state, and put you in massive debt. There are legislators locally here in Texas and nationally, that is what they're working on. They And that goes back to your first point about the government trying to enslave. The way you destroy a country is you remove the men. That's how it's done. That this and the government's okay doing it. Men, you need to stand up and get the snip snip, do whatever, and not get involved. Your your time to acquire wealth and all the things that you need to be successful later on is now in your younger uh years. Do not I hate to say saddle, but do not saddle yourself with uh children having kids out of wedlock. Um, uh, even getting married early because again, it's harder and harder to find a quality woman that when she's in her thirties has that, you know, I'm going to find me moment and take everything that you've gained. You guys need to be on your purpose. As you point out a million times, be on your purpose. And for anyone that disagrees or whatever, go to my website, pissedoffparent.com. And now has an AI chat bot that will you can ask questions of, and it will give you every statistic you could possibly imagine proving this is the case. Sorry, yeah, go ahead. Hundred <laughs> percent, and and I think I think most people know that if if they wait till they got married to have kids, um, you know, everyone understands and understands the the importance of having a two parent household. Check out this comment by Aaron Witt. This right here, that's funny. <laughs> oh boy, it's killing two birds one stone right there. You know? Yeah, multitask. Yeah, it's good. Why pay? Why pay gym membership? You just go to work and get paid to work out. That's funny. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, so number eleven, and this is a very important one too. Be disciplined. Um, I talk about discipline a whole lot, and you guys know me to be a man of discipline. In a life full of pleasures at every corner, discipline plays a more important role than it ever has been before. Many people uh, attribute their success to their discipline. Uh, for them, more than knowledge, communications, or even skills, discipline actually played a key role in their way to becoming as successful as they as they were. Um, discipline in life has many virtues, like being focused, staying healthy. Uh, it also helps avoid problems. Um, you know, as, as as per the current lifestyle and social trends, discipline. Discipline techniques seem to be essential life skills. Um, discipline is one of the factors by which people judge others. We talked about mm -hmm. that. And highly talented, hardworking people, they just simply cannot be successful if they're not disciplined. Uh, so, right. you know, figure out what it is that you want to do in life, what your passion is, and then put together a game plan where every day you're going to do this at this time or that time. You know, if if you if you are realizing that you're dragging rear end all day, then you need to get more sleep. Then you go, hey, at 11 o'clock, I'm going to hit the sack and then I'm going to wake up at seven. I get eight hours every night uh, or I don't care what goes on. I'm going to hit the gym. I don't care what happens. I'm going to eat small proportion meals and make sure I eat healthy. I don't care what happens. I'm going to make sure I do this or that. You've got to have discipline. There is no successful person on this planet ever created, ever obtained success or wealth or money or anything of value for that matter without discipline. Okay. In your relationships, in your personal relationships, in your marriages, it all takes discipline and hard work and consistency. So be sure to instill discipline. And, and guys and gals, for your kids, if you don't have any discipline and you try to beat them over the head for them to have discipline for, for themselves, it's not going to go over yeah. very well. Okay. Lead by example. Um, number 12, maybe a controversial one. Maybe some of you agree. Maybe some of you don't. This is my stance. Number 12, that I would teach my kids is college may not be the best choice. Yeah, that's perfect. It may not. Interestingly yeah. enough, 38.6% of people said they were not using their degree in their current profession. 
and 16.6% right. said they dropped out of college before even obtaining their degree. We hear a lot about from, from millennials who struggle in the job market. As a matter of right. fact, two out of five Americans don't even, they admit to not even seeing the value in their college degree. That's a total of 53.2 million former students saying that they're unsure about the value of their degree. Student loan debt has tripled since 2006, <laughs> tripled. And uh, it now makes up 1.45 trillion in household debt, according to Finder's analysis of Federal Reserve Bank data. If mm -hmm. growth continues at this pace, folks, then that means that by the year 2042, student loan balances are going to overtake mortgages. Oh, boy. And you're throwing, yeah, you're throwing bombs right now because, yeah, the student loan debt issue is ridiculous. And of course, you know, that, I guess getting way into the other part about the forgiveness and all that. Uh, a lot of people, yeah, they don't do what their degree was. Um, it's not for everybody. I mean, the trades, if you look, if you look at the numbers and somebody had asked a question about age ranges for uh, uh, wealth acquisition, this kind of ties into it. But if you, if you tell your son or daughter, get into welding, get into the trade system, they are going to make a hell of a lot more money over the decades, learn and trade and be valuable than someone that goes to college and gets saddled with debt. I mean, it, it's a no yeah. It's not if you're if you're inclined to you know i need college for xyz i mean in my field i have to be able to check the box that i have a bachelor's degree um so in order to do the stuff i do i have to have you know that level of education along with a bunch of certifications but uh at times that makes sense and if i want to go down that path that's the way i go yep but yeah telling people the old i mean it's a it's a lie that's being told to our children over and over you have to go to college you have to go to college no you find out what I mean, if you're son or daughter, which you hopefully know well enough and you've raised them, you can go, you know what? You're not meant for academia. There are some kids that are like that. You're meant for welding, carpentry, whatever, uh, you know, that person's passion is. Uh, and, and, and they learn that and send them down that path. They'll be much happier for it. Um, and then maybe send do a, an amount of college if they feel like it to teach them that more well-rounded how to think. I mean, you can be a welder. I've met the smartest welders in the world and I met the dumbest uh, academic uh, people in the world. I mean, there, there was, you know, that just because you go to school or don't go to school doesn't make you smart. It's, you know, the things that you've been talking about this entire time, learning, getting better, stretching the, the, those brain cells and becoming a better person that all, you know, gets in there. But yeah, the, the student loan debt uh, issue is ridiculous. A lot of people have been sold a bill of goods, obviously, and here we are today. Um, and unfortunately, our government isn't helping. I won't touch on the controversial topic, but we have the other topic where our government is now rewarding people that do poorly with mortgages, um, where and, you know, I'm in the mortgage industry, so I have a little bit of authority here, um, where we're basically telling people that have saved their money and have a high credit score, we're actually going to penalize those people and give that money to the people that don't have a high credit score that have uh, things basically recreating 2008 in a different way, but a whole different topic. Uh, but yeah, our government's not here to help us in there. We need our parents to teach our children. And as we're raising them, we teach, you know, we, we say, is college for you? Yes or no. And then we, and we do the appropriate things. I mean, if there's, it's controversial. Do you pay for your kid's college? Do you pay for part of it? Do you pay for none of it? And it depends on who you listen to and, and your financial position on how you handle that. These are all things as parents, you should have been thinking about the first time your wife put on a 90. I hate this. I hate to, you know, ruin the romance there, but those are the things when you become a dad um, and a mom, your life changes, I would argue, for the much better because it's very enriching uh, to be a parent. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> it's one of the best things I ever did. But uh, it stuff you've got to think about. It's not she wore a ninety or or you had a good night. It you you're your parents now. You've got to teach your kids to be better. And I'll I'll stop there. I'm I'm sorry. I'm detracting a lot. <laughs> You're all good, my friend. But let me read this stat about, about colleges, the one that I just pulled up. So it says that yeah. some 43.7% of recent graduates of those ages 22 to 27 with a bachelor's degree or higher are underemployed, according to the Federal Reserve yep. Bank of New York's labor market for recent college graduates. So it could mean that they're working in jobs that don't even require their degrees. We're right. still, folks. The report finds that 34.4% of all college grads ages 22 to 65 
with a bachelor's degree or higher are underemployed. That means that some 462.3 billion in student loan debt is potentially repaid by people in jobs that don't require the degree that costs them so much to earn. Yep. I'll just leave it at that. Okay, you guys decide how you want to raise your kids. My advice is college is not necessarily for everyone because it's so diluted now. I will tell yep. you this. I have been a hiring manager for the last 20 to 25 years. I can't think of how many people with master's degrees are applying for my $15 an hour front desk positions. I'll just leave it at that. I think that college is worth it if you're in gonna, if you're going to be in STEM, science, technology, engineering or math to Dwayne's right. point. If you're going to be a, a dentist, if you're going to be an IT guy, if you're going to be a doctor, if you're going to be an engineer, absolutely, you're going to have to have a college degree. Right. I'm just saying that a degree in art, a degree in social studies, a degree in communications, Good. those are just going to be degrees that you're going to be spending $40,000 on, repaying a loan that you're probably not going to be using it, and there's no money in those things. So I'll, I'll leave the rest to you guys. The final three tips that I would want you guys to teach your kids, number 13, do not make women a priority. This is for the guys. Don't yeah. make, make sure you teach your sons, especially in their 20s, do not make women a priority. Look, when when boys are 16, 18, we're walking around like this. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry for the graphics. We're walking around with a salute. All we can yeah. think about is women. Every three seconds, it is said oh, yeah. that a man is thinking about sex every three seconds in those age ranges. It's hard mm -hmm. to get guys to not think no about girls. It's just, it's just bio <laughs> biology, okay? But if you can instill your son's purpose, good morals, good values, make sure he works hard. A lot of kids in today's world think that in their 20s, they've got to have a whole bunch of fun and they work hard in their 30s and 40s. No, it's the other way around. Mm -hmm. You work hard in your 20s. That way you don't have to work as hard as in your, your 40s or 50s. So when guys are making women a priority, they oftentimes put their focus on not the things that are going to make them money or bring them higher value on the open dating market. Or right. And remember, guys are often valued for their ability to provide and protect. The provide part usually comes like this. The provide 100 years ago meant that I grab my rifle, go shoot a rabbit and bring it home. Today, it means I bring home this, the, me the metaphorical bacon. Okay, And if mm -hmm. you're chasing chicks your entire 20s, when you should be out there chasing dreams and purpose, then you're going to struggle making the type of money that's going to be required to acquire the family that you want. So make sure you teach your boys, especially to not chase women, not make them a priority in their early ages. The 14th tip, we're almost to the end of it. Write down a top 100 list. We have all heard the, the, the bucket list and you make five or 10 things. I, one of the most influential things I ever did was when a good friend of mine asked me or actually required me to put down a piece of paper. I've got it on this computer right over there. Put down a piece of paper and I wrote down the top 100 things I want to do before I die. And the first 20 weren't that hard. The next 20 was harder. But when you start getting past 60 things, it, you, you start to really soul search and think of what is it that I want to do? What do I want to accomplish? Where do I want to go? What do I want to see? And when you finally complete a top 100 list, I noticed that 10, 15 of those things I already did. And right off the rip, I was able to, I put them on a Word document. So I was able to highlight in yellow what I've already accomplished. And it made me feel good that I was able to accomplish 12 or 15% of the list already. But what it also did was it made me, it gave me purpose and direction that I need to be doing these things here to be able to be able to afford to do those things there. I've got to right. develop myself as a man to attract someone to I want to, to, to be with me to want to go do and share these things together. It's like a vision board, folks. You guys know the power of a vision board, whether you believe in the law of attraction or the uh, the secret or God or whatever the universe. I, we all can agree that if you keep your eye on the prize, that the universe will reciprocate. One of the best ways to do it is a vision board or, excuse me, in this case, a top 100 list. It'll right. definitely serve you well. Have it tangible on a piece of paper, not just in your mind. And the last tip, 
that I would give you guys to teach your kids is, and this one is, you guys know this one to be true. The last lesson I would teach your kids, really drive this home. No decision is more important than who you pick as a spouse. <laughs> yeah, amen. Ugh. Tell me I'm lying. Yeah. There is I, no I, more important decision that your son or your daughter will ever <laughs> make in their lives than who they pick as their spouse. And I know you love your kids. You love them. You would take a bullet for them. I already know. Please understand that just because your kids are the most important thing to you, you have to understand that to the rest of the world, they're just kids. They're not going to get any special treatment. They're not going to have, they're not going to get it any easier because you love them to death. The world does not owe your children, you or I understanding. They're going to have to grind and they're going to have to get out there in the arena of life and fight the, alongside of the rest of us. If you want your son to attract the highest quality and caliber of woman, if you want your daughter to attract the most masculine, assertive, successful, and um, an ambitious man that she can, then you're going to have to make sure that they level themselves up as human beings to attract mm -hmm. and acquire the largest amount that they can instill good morals and values and make sure that they're leveling themselves up because I don't want them to, I don't want your daughters to get out there and try to find a, a good stand-up guy when she has two kids from other men outside of wedlock. It's just going to limit the amount of good men that she has. I don't want your son to get out there and chase women in his 20s and He's now the assistant manager at McDonald's instead of on fries. He leveled up a little bit, but the guy's making, you know, I don't know, $17, $18 an hour. And he's got to get out there and try to attract a woman. And when she asks him what he does for a living and he says, I work at Starbucks or I work at, you know, Mickey D's, it's guys, you know, it's going to hurt him. He might be a good dude. Your, your kids are good people. But to the rest of the world, these girls out there who are looking for the best kind of man they can, and your son will probably be overlooked by the kind of women that he deserves if he's yeah. on assistant manager duty at McDonald's. I know it's not fun to hear, but you know it's freaking true. Facts. It's just facts. So understand that no decision is more important than who you pick as a spouse. But the 14 tips I've given you to teach your kids prior to that one right there will all help him and her develop and attract and obtain and acquire and keep the best quality spouse they can. If you do those things and you teach your kids those things, you'll give them the best chance of winning. Guys, mm -hmm. I, I really want to uh, uh, thank you guys for all that you've done. Thank you for all the comments you've put. Great stuff. Uh, Dwayne and I are here on the Big Show uh, podcast every Sunday at 9 a.m. Central, 10 a.m. Eastern. We want to see you guys here next week for another edition of the Big Show. We appreciate it, and we'll see you guys next week. See you soon.